All right, there it is, guys, my TDR from Air Arms. Actually, from Air Gun Classified. But uh, anyway, it's uh, made by Air Arms. Takedown rifle. High power. 30 foot-pounds in 22. Boy, you got a prayer in Memphis. Okay, guys, that right there is my FX crown. And this right here is something I'm really happy to get. It was $89 at Sportsman's Warehouse. It's heavy duty. You can see it's as long as the FX crown. This is made out of heavy angle iron right here. This seems like heavy pipe with sort of tent stake material that fits right in there. Hint, hint. If one of you guys wants to make one of these for yourself. Now these are super thick. So I can shoot these thousands of times with my 25 caliber 30 caliber and even the big boy big boars and it's not going to hurt them at all this is a dueling tree and i always really wanted one of these so basically you go chunk in the ground then you got these sticking up and when you hit one it flips over and you got the other side right there and you and your buddy can have races or you can just race yourself that's what i'm going to be doing because i don't have any friends but my fx crown has said he would be my friend Hopefully my mom is not sending him like monthly checks to hang out with me. But anyway, I'm just going to enjoy our time together. Today, however, there is a new game in town. I'm going to have to put my FX crown away so I don't wreck it. Hey, look like that takedown rifle right there. These are the exact same buttons that come on my Steyr cases. So that's legit. It also gives you a place to put your name tag just in case your rifle gets lost and an honest person finds it. Which could happen, I assure you. One time I lost a $500, a wallet with $500 in it at Subway Sandwiches and the girls called me or actually wrote me a letter to my P.O. box and uh, later on I went in there and got it like three months later and of course I gave them all $100 tips. But I was really happy. Whoa. Holy crap, you guys. Look at this. I got a TDR. And apparently I got an LDC too. Rocking it. Oh my gosh. There's my, there's my stock right there. Well, hold on. Obviously you get an awesome case right here. So let me just close this up and get this bad boy out of here. Well, that's a mean looking little dude right there. If you want to go pistol grip style, you can definitely do that. Take your LDC off and you get a real concealable air gun right there. So there we go. There's the back right there, and I'm going to slip the buttstock over that thing and into those holes right there. See? Okay, it's spring-loaded right there. That's neat. So I'm going to come down here, and I guess I'm going to loosen that all the way. Well, I obviously don't know how to do this, so let me read the instructions real fast. It comes with this nifty instruction manual. Now, look at this European quality right here. Full color. Look at that. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. Trigger adjustment, everything. All right, guys. It says apply a little bit of pressure on the spring right there and then begin to tighten this wheel right here and it should suck up on there and be tight. You see? Even a caveman could do it. Oh yeah, I just finger tightened that. It came out really nice. Check it out. How do you like that noise right there? That is one badass air rifle. I'd always wanted one of these. There it is, the Air Arms TDR takedown rifle, 22 caliber, high power, 30 foot pounds of energy and 22. Now there's a lot of these for sale that are not high power, so that's why I finally got one because they just came out with high power. And now as of 2019, Air Arms just put regulators in all their guns so you can get this gun regulated from the factory now. Although, the one that we're testing today is not regulated. Alright, you guys, here it is at Pyramid Air. It's priced at $989. Let's get some hardcore stats on this bad boy. 
All right, 200 bar fill, even though the manometer goes to 250. And there's nothing indicating the fill line on there. So you just have to be smart. Remember, it's a 200 bar fill, ultra lightweight. Okay. Fast assembly and takedown, like we just saw. Two stage adjustable match grade trigger with safety. Ambidextrous walnut stock, accessory rail, fully shrouded Lothar Walther barrel. Okay, I'm liking that. Smooth side lever cocking mechanism. Built in power adjuster. Didn't see that on there. Oh, there it is. Vertical adjustable butt pad. Okay, that means that the butt plate right here slides up and down. It's pretty standard. Built in manometer. And I like the fact that it's located under there so you don't have to look down the barrel of your gun when you're filling it up. The dimensions of that case that I showed you is 36 long. 14 inches wide and 5 inches tall. Includes a hard case, two magazines, and a fill adapter threaded to BSPP male. So you're going to have to get a female BSPP foster fitting to get your air tank and air and saw all that stuff into there. Going down the hardcore stats, 950 feet per second they say, 32 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Two on a loudness scale, that's good because I can't shoot a lot of air guns in my house. The overall length is... 40 inches overall with a 16 inch barrel 15.5 inch barrel 10 shot capacity of course the barrels rifled no sights 11 millimeter dust tail good for small game hunting and target practice manual safety of course it's a pcp pre charge pneumatic so you fill it with a scuba tank or a, or a 4500 psi hand pump about 30 shots per fill they're saying here counts as a rifle weighs 6.2 pounds hmm a little bit lightweight i guess the cylinder size right there for the, your air is 156 cc's. Shredder barrel. Alright, so this is what the manufacturer says about their S510. Built on a tried and true S510 action, the TDR takedown rifle packs all the features that small game hunters want in a highly maneuverable and transportable package. Able to break down in seconds, the S510 TDR is built to go anywhere you can. The ultra lightweight stock features a finely grained walnut forein with a removable rear stock that fits together to form a compact carbine. For convenient transport, each S510 TDR comes with a hard case with custom cut foam. Look, there's even a place for your pellets right there. That will fit the action with added space to allow for a scope, buttstock, and even spaces for magazines and a 10 of your favorite pellets. Each of these rifles is available in 177 and 22 caliber with Two of Air Arms standard 10 shot magazines in each package. Fill the gun to 190 bar to achieve speeds as high as 1,035 feet per second in 177. Each S510 TDR includes an adjustable power wheel, right there, for finding the ideal balance between shot strings and power. Awesome. It's super accurate and super quiet due to a fully shrouded Lothar Walther barrel with an integrated Q Tech suppressor. Follow-up shots are quick and easy with the smooth side lever action. Oh, that's pretty smooth, all right. While shooting your first mag, keep your extra magazine ready on hand with a built-in storage compartment on the underside of the adjustable cheek piece. What? Freaking awesome. An 11 millimeter dovetail rail is included for mounting optics. And a two-stage adjustable trigger makes superbly accurate shots within reach. Sounds awesome. Nice trigger. So I'm still reading from the manufacturer here, and this is the last paragraph. So if you want world-class quality with premium accuracy, only Air Arms can provide. The S510 TDR answers the call with a PCP that is built to travel. So that's the strength of this thing. It breaks down. Great gun for your truck. So we're going to take it outside. 950 feet per second in 22. That's about as powerful as you want to get. So uh, we'll see if it really does that and how it slings those 18 grain, 14 grain, and 15 grain JSB pellets. Heck, we're going to try some heavy ones too, so I can't wait to get a scope on this bad Larry and get it out there and do some testing. Alright, thank God I had some of these bad Larrys laying around. This is the 1 8th BSPP foster fitting female nipple. So... An important thing with your air guns is you don't want to get any of this Teflon tape inside. So when we're winding it around, we're going to wind it the same direction that your thing is going to spin. And also we're going to keep it away from the top of the threads right there. There, I got that all on there. So the yellow Teflon tape is for gas. 
Might be a little better, but you can use white Teflon tape as well. I forgot to check inside here to see if there's any junk in there, and I do remember that there was. Here it is. That's a piece of junk that was in there, so definitely check your fittings before you screw everything together. Make sure it's all clean. Well, let's tighten these together with a wrench. I'll be all set, ready to fill my air arms. Awesome. That means I can shoot it right away. Bam. So now you take the end of your air hose, or you can use a hand pump or whatever, especially for a 165cc tank like this. There you go. Now I'm guessing that the fill compartment is up here, so let's see. Alright, that's nice. This stuff is, this gun is just machined so nicely. This thing just goes on and off, everything tightens up just like, as good as you can get. So you take this guy, line it up right there with that. There you go, you're in. That's it right there, so good system. So I'm going to fill this to 200 bar right there. Now I always like to keep my eye on the gauge that's on my gun not the one on my air tank so i'm going to keep my eye on here and fill it slowly you want to fill your pcp air gun slowly only to 200 bar now if i accidentally fill it too high you just shoot it a couple times with no pellets in there and it will get down to 200 and you'll be you'll be fine You heard that noise that was me bleeding off my air hose so now that I'm no longer pressurized I'll just go ahead and pop that off nice I shot this bad Larry at the floor just now with nothing in it and it's got some kick definitely pushing out over 900 feet per second I can tell so I want to show you how the magazine goes in and out pull your side lever back there you can see that right there there's a little spring right there and that notch right there goes right into that spring like this boom that's it that holds your magazine in there okay got my scope on there all aired up 200 bar let's do this all right guys these magazines are pretty easy to use you don't have to do any of that cover stuff like you do with a marauder magazine you just drop the pellet in there and go ahead and wind it like this and when you're all the way full you'll be all the way around up ready to go and put in the gun we're going to start with 18 grain jsbs got my Range set up at 35 yards, which is going to be right through there. I'm going to get this all going. Let's get this party started. So, wow, it looks like you just drop a pellet in here, turn it, and there's no winding at all. The gun itself just advances at whatever point you're at, and this couldn't be easier to load. I love it. Fast and easy. Now, I'm not sorting these pellets. I'm just throwing them in there as I find them because I don't have... Oh, that one was a little too bad. If they're horribly bent, I'll try not to put them in there, but like, there's one right there that's bent. Alright, so my magazine right here, you can just keep going like this, and there's no spring or anything. It just clicks into position there. Alright, there we go. 35 yards, JSB, 18 grains. Alright guys, let's hope that's a one-shot zero. Here we go. Nice. Bullseye. Yeah, that's a really nice trigger on this baby. Now it is a little bit windy right now. All right, ten shots. Uh, that's a dime right there. So good, ten shot group. That's not bad. Thirty-five yards. One full magazine and one empty shot brought us from two hundred down to one fifty bar. All right, guys, now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to shoot those 18-grain JSBs at uh, the three or four different power levels. So we're going to do power level number two, three, and four in condescending order. Okay, guys, I'm back up to 200 bar, and I'm going to shoot a group on high, and then let me see. We got one, two, three, four. Looks like we've got three power settings. So we're gonna shoot the first group on high. Here we go, 18 grain JSB, 200 bar fill. All 
All right, now we're gonna pop down to power level number two. This is medium. I'm gonna go ahead and just do my 200 bar fill again. Hold on. All right, you guys, uh, power level number two down from the top. We're just gonna call it three. Well, better not shoot there. It's right by my camera. I'm just gonna go for the regular bullseye. Here we go. All right, you guys, so look at that badass group right there. Now, that was on power level number two, which is one up from the lowest power setting, 18 grain GSBs. I'm gonna do it again, and I, I'm gonna do it through the bullseye this time. I'm gonna click my click my crosshairs over. Maybe we can take out the rest of that bullseye. Okay, guys, this is uh, JSB 18 grains on power level number two. One more time. Guys, I screwed that one up because I clicked my crosshairs the wrong way. But uh, I think we get the idea pretty accurate on that power setting number two. Now let's go down to the lowest power setting, 18 grand GSBs. All right, guys, I want to get this sighted into a pinpoint so I can do some real bullseye tries. And so I'm going to use one of these two side in. Boy, safety's like a little hard to reach there. Bullet impact left. Might be it. Now, up. Well, that could have been me. Let's try it again. Can't tell where that went. Shit, I think we're sided in, kids. Let's go for this middle. There we go. That was just a flyer. I know some of my pellets were bent. So guys, power level number two seems to be really good on these JSB 18 grains. I think I put them all through that hole. I can't really tell from back there. Anyway though, I'm gonna go to the lowest power level, which would be, I guess, power level number one. Again, I'm at 200 bar fill. My scope cam just ran out of juice, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, nail these guys. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go power level one lowest, number two, and number four. That last room right there was on medium. So I had low, medium, and this is going to be high power. It almost seems like the lower you put your velocity, the better these 18 grains shoot. Here we are back on high power where we started. Guys, yeah, that was pretty good. It pretty much stacks them in the same ragged hole no matter what power level you use. So that's cool. Now the manufacturer says this gets 30 shots per fill, so we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna air it up to 200 bar, and I'm gonna shoot 30 shots, three magazines, maybe four, and we'll see what happens to the point of impact. All right, you guys, that was four magazines, and so it seemed like it started out, and in the middle of the shot string, the point of impact kind of came up, and then this group right here, that was the beginning of my fourth magazine, okay? And then I was aiming here, 
And then I just kept going through my fourth magazine. This is the first five shots and the last five shots of magazine number four. And halfway through magazine number four, my point of impact came from here to where I was aiming to. And now I'm ready for magazine number five. I'll just aim right here. Actually, I'm just going to aim where I was aiming for magazine four, which is right in the center of this square right there. All right, guys, now these right here were the beginning of my fifth magazine. That's 50 shots. So the number 50s were going right here. I think that four magazines was the end of my shot string right there. Anyway, this is shot number 40, 41, 42, and then I dropped right off. So I started this fifth magazine right here at 100 bar. So I went from 100 to probably like 75, and I could, I could hear it dropping off. Well, let's just do this one more time. We're going to do this BR-50 target so that we can just see with each magazine what's really going on. See, I'll just do four magazines uh, tic-tac-toe style. Well, I guess that would be five, but we'll just do five. 18 grain GSBs from 200 bar fill. Here we go. I'm sorry, I knew that would happen. <laughs> that was my group right there, my fourth magazine. It looks like my third and fourth were about my best groups. Now, I can assure you that MTC scope is so easy to aim. Like, I'll explain all that later when I review the scope because it is really good reticle. But, yeah, I can assure you all these shots were dead on the money. Shooting like a robot today. So, one thing I did forget to do, though, was turn it up to high, so I'm going to air it up to 200 bar again, and we're going to shoot four magazines on high right now. Apparently, you turn the power dial anti-clockwise to increase the power. All right, so now we have some real research here, and this is actually very good for this gun because it doesn't matter where I was hitting. I wasn't going for, you know, targets. But basically, I was aiming right here at the bullseye, and so we can see that I hit at this spot, and then my second magazine raised up a teeny bit. My third magazine kind of stayed where my first one was, maybe came back down a little bit, and then, of course, my fourth magazine dropped off. So that's probably your 30 shots. So if my... Crosshairs would have been tuned instead of being tuned to right here if they were tuned to right here Then I would have had these all would have looked pretty awesome actually so uh, just for kicks I'm gonna go ahead and throw some super heavy JSBs in here. I think I have 25 and 30 something grains, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna shoot these targets with that All right, check out these pellets I got here, guys. These are some 25 grains, 33 grain, 22 calibers, and then the 18 grains. So I just got done shooting these 25s. I'm going to go ahead and load up some of these Diablo Beast 33s, if they'll fit in the magazine. Otherwise, I'll single shot load them and uh, see what this TDR has to say about it. All right, there we go. 33 grain JSB Beast. Here we go. Thirty-three grain JSBs. We're doing pretty good. All right, guys. My final thoughts on the TDR. It's freaking awesome. You got the under the butt pad storage for your magazines. Super high quality. I found that shooting from the bench rest, this vertical grip was really easy to keep on target. This trigger is just awesome. This two-stage trigger, and it breaks beautifully. Of course, you can see the build quality and the quality of materials and the finish on this thing is just beautiful from head to toe. I mean, I really wanted one of these a long time ago. Before I got really into air gunning, 
as much as I am now. And I can tell you, if I would have bought this, I would have been so happy with my purchase. Especially if you're shooting, you want a gun that you can shoot at the bench rest or offhand. This thing did great in my bench rest. I was able to really hold it on target and easily do my target shooting. Of course, that MTC Mamba Light helps a lot too. That reticle is awesome. So yeah, just real quick, I love the trigger. I like that it has a rail down there for a bipod. I think uh, I was holding this and just aiming it around my yard. It was super easy to keep on target when you're just holding it offhand or whatever. I really love the takedown system. This whole thing is super solid. You know, that's as solid as it gets. You don't feel any wiggle or nothing on that. Not even, not even close. This cocking action, I did it a ton of times. You know, when I was shooting, I would just go like this without even looking. And it's just shaped perfectly. It goes back very easily. They got all these crazy angles to their little bar here. And it just goes perfectly with your hand. It's like... I can't really imitate what I was doing on the bench rest right now. But it was it was very easy and it very natural and very good. Just butter smooth both ways. I love the way the magazine clicks in there. It's super easy. Every time, no messing around. These are also, and I'm going to say, these are the best magazines that I have ever come across in an air gun for loading, okay? Because there's no spring. You don't have to worry about having your spring wound the right direction or holding it there or doing all that business when you're turning it over and all that stuff. Check this out. I want you guys to see how easy this loads. So you just drop a mag like that. Drop it in like that. That's literally it. You just... Take your pellet, drop it somewhere near the hole, and it goes in every single time. I'm literally, like, throwing them into the magazine from a distance away. You see that? I've never come across any magazine that loads like that, okay? It is extremely, extremely fast, extremely, extremely easy. You just drop it anywhere near the hole. This is real time, you guys, so... Yeah, that is awesome. So, it's got the best magazine I have ever encountered in air gunning so far. Personally, that I like. Snaps in, no fuss every time. The magazine also spins this way, so you can see when you're almost out of shots if you can't count to 10 like me. So, obviously, it has an adjustable trigger, but out of the box, it was sweet. This grip, this vertical grip, just really feels so natural and good when I'm shooting off the bench rest, too. I'm telling you guys now, if you want a rifle that's going to impress your friends, and your friends are going to be like, oh, that is awesome looking. Definitely, this uh, fits the bill for that. And it's a very accurate, good plinker at 35 yards. I'm not going to do any 50-yard testing because we can see how it shoots. It gets half-inch groups consistently at 35 yards. I'm sure it does about one-inch groups at 50. It's not a long-range shooter, okay? It has a 15-inch barrel, so you're not going to reach out too far with that, but I'm sure this does really good at 50 yards. I like that it wasn't pellet picky. We shot everything from 18 grain up to monster. Now this gun does come in a regulated version. It comes in a low power version. This is high power. The other thing I really liked about it is this wheel. It has three or four adjustment settings on it. And that just makes the possibilities endless on all these different kinds of ammo. All these different weights of ammo. So you got your certain kind of pellet. And you can shoot it at four different speeds on the fly with your will. You know, so that's huge. So you can sit there and play around with your favorite pellets, H&Ns, you know, Crossman Premiers, whatever. And it doesn't seem to be very pellet picky. It was shooting, you know, 33 grain. So I'm sure you'll be able to have so much fun with this, you know. Trying different pellets, trying different speeds. And what a great little gun. Plus... It's good if you want to practice your offhand shooting. It's well balanced and it's just the perfect gun for holding, the perfect gun for hunting, and the perfect gun for transporting. Now, I'm saving my money for the new Air Force Raw LRT long range target. And I have one reserved at Pyramid Air. So I got to come up with uh, $2,039 in the next 10 days. That is, if they arrive on the 14th like they're supposed to. So unfortunately, this bad boy is going on the auction block. He's going to get thrown on air gun classifieds and hopefully I'll get about 900 bucks. But like I said, there are 989 I believe new worth every penny. I mean, this is a good $1000 PCP. It's worth it. It's accurate. It's fun. 
that's it, you guys. All right, so thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. I got a lot of cool guns coming up, for, so definitely subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. You guys ready? Here we go. Boom! In the room! I've been waiting for this Brocock Commander for so long. So I am actually kind of glad I didn't buy the first version because they just came out with a high power, which is 60 foot-pounds in 25. 55 foot-pounds, I believe, in 22. And it uh, goes on from there.